Get in the know and never miss an announcement, event, or alert from Rivers of Life. All you have to do is text the word text me to 59769 and subscribe today. Let your children learn about God on their level. Bring them to Children's Church Sundays at 12 p.m. in person and online. For more information how to connect online, email CYI at ConnectedHands.org. It's time to overcome the issues controlling your life. Join All Purpose Recovery every week on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Dial in only 339-207-8315. A safe haven to release and reset. That's All Purpose Recovery. Meeting weekly on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Dial in only 339-207-8315. Bible study is now back in session. Join Rivers of Life for a life-changing Bible study weekly on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. View us on Facebook Live, The Rivers of Life, or YouTube at The Rivers of Life. We look forward to seeing you there. Join us for the Breaking Barriers prayer line nightly at 9 p.m. Dial in only at 508. 924-2034. For 2024, we're breaking barriers to deepen our faith and widen our connections. Meet us there and bring a friend nightly at 9 p.m. 508-924-2034. It's time to celebrate Rivers of Life 10th Church anniversary. We're looking back to move forward. Special guest preacher, Apostle Tawana Thompson. You don't want to miss this celebration on April the 6th, 2024 at Our House Restaurant and Banquet Facility at 420 Adelphia Road in Farmingdale, New Jersey. Doors open at 1230. Event starts at 1 p.m. Tickets for adults are $85 and for children under 12, Tickets are $35. For tickets and more information, please visit our website at www.theriversoflife.org. We can't wait to celebrate with you. We want you to get in the flow. Text ROLAPP to 59769 and receive a link to our app. There you can see our yearly calendar. Submit your prayer requests. Complete online giving. Connect with us on social media. Read the Bible and more. Text ROLAPP to 59769 and get in the flow today. All these announcements and more can be found on our website at www.theriversoflife.org. It's time for our Ministry of Giving. And there's more than one way to give here at Rivers of Life. You can give through Cash App, dollar sign, The Rivers of Life. Through Givelify, search Houses of Worship, Rivers of Life. Through our website at www.theriversoflife.org. You can now also give through Zelle via our email, finance, at the rivers of life.org. Now that you've had some time to give, let's say our giving prayer. Lord, I seek you before everything I do, especially in my ministry of giving. Today I give cheerfully in agreement and obedience to your will. Bless it, increase it, and sanctify it in Jesus' name. Amen. In the heart of our faith, we find strength. In the whispers of our prayers, we discover hope. 
Today, let us come together as one to embrace the light of love, the beauty of grace, and our unwavering faith. In the warmth of these walls, we find refuge. In the unity of our congregation, we find belonging. We are bound not only by our shared beliefs, but by the love and compassion that flow through these chairs. Let us be the hands that reach out to those in need and the voice of compassion for those in despair. Let our lives be a testament to the power of faith and the overwhelming grace of God. Let us be the light that shines in the darkness, the hands that lift the fallen, and the voice of hope to a world in need. In our faith, we find our calling. In our church, we find our family. And in our service, we find our purpose. May the love and grace of our Lord guide us together on life's journey. Thank you for it all on today. Hallelujah. I'm quick. I'm not already. Amen. I want to welcome our online guests to the rivers of life. I'm your pastor, Pastor Rashawn. And as always, I like to welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just got a couple of things to get on out the way. I want to remind you all of our 10th anniversary church banquet. Come on, make some noise for 10 whole years. Amen. I said 10 whole years. Amen. I don't know how. Come on, somebody. But I know that so long as God is in the midst, he will make a way. Won't he do it? Amen. So I'm, 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 I'm grateful about it. Amen. As we celebrate 10 years. In the godly business. Amen. Yes. Amen. That paper will take place on uh, April the 6th. Amen. If you haven't got your tickets, now would be a good time to do so. Uh, we want to start getting prepared for that. So um, if you can, all monies should be in by today. Um, no later than this Wednesday. Amen. 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 Also, um, for our online visitors, amen, I just ask that you do a couple of things for me, amen. One is, I ask that you that you like and share the broadcast, amen. We all have been charged with the duty of discipleship, amen. And the best way that we can do that is by sharing the broadcast, amen. The Bible says that we're supposed to preach the words to the ends of the earth, amen. And we know that the internet is wide and it's deep, amen. So, amen. So, if you could just like and share the broadcast, you did your job for the day. Come on, somebody, amen. So, just like and share the broadcast. And also, if you if you not subscribe to our Facebook or our YouTube channel, um, you can do that as well, amen. You can subscribe and therefore you will get a notification for every time that we have an event, every time that we go live, um, you will be in the know. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Um, now, I know you could have went anywhere on your timeline, amen, but um, I'm so glad that you decided to take a dip in the river, amen, because we believe that once you take a dip in the river, that you will come again, amen. We believe that there is healing in the rivers. Hallelujah. We believe that there is deliverance in the river. Come on, somebody. But just because Christ, he's the head of this house, amen. He's the one that set the motion, amen. We, we believe that there is life in the river. So I welcome you to the rivers of life. Come on, make some noise in here. Amen, amen. I see some of some of our faithful online people. Amen. Shout out to my aunt Pat that's watching. Amen. Uh, Elder Lisa, amen. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So glad that you decided to take a dip in the river. 
Amen. Before we get moving, amen, I just want to make sure that we say our vision statement on today. Can we do that, family? Can we say our vision statement today? Hallelujah. And y'all going to say it with me? Come on. Amen. The good word says to equip, empower, and inspire the people to know, follow, and conform to the image of Jesus Christ by being a leading example of the fruits of the Spirit through fellowship, discipleship, ministry, evangelism, and worship. Come on, give it up for the vision. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God. Amen. I want to make sure that we keep our apostle prayed up. Amen. I tell you that the enemy is, 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 is definitely working. Amen. He, he on his job. Amen. But I'm so glad that we serve a God that's in control of all things. Amen. So even if the enemy try, come on somebody. Amen. That don't mean that he goes to see. The Bible says that the weapon shall fall. Amen. But it won't prosper. Come on somebody. Amen. Amen. You got to know it. Amen. You got to acknowledge that thing. Hallelujah. So I thank God, amen, for the covenant. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Bless God. Bless God in this holy temple. Amen. I tell you, amen. Um, we're not going to be in here long today. Amen. I'm, I'm feeling a little under the weather myself. Amen. So, you know, we're going to be swift if you don't mind. Amen. Get yeah. it quick. Amen. Can we do that today, amen? I don't got no notes or nothing, amen. I'm going to just be from the heart on today, amen. Um, I tell you, I done preached about five Palm Sundays, amen. So I, I, I know the word, amen. So, um, you know, I just, I just want to give you something that I uh, that I came across on, on last night, early this morning. Um, a different way of looking at it, amen. I heard you was asking why we don't do the palm, why we don't give out the palms no more, amen. Right. Who's that asking that, amen? Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. I'll believe it at that, amen. <laughs> I will leave it at that, amen. I might have an answer for you in, in, in this world today, amen. Um, so with that being said, amen. Come on, can we get our worship on, amen? amen. amen. Can we set the atmosphere real amen. right up in here? Hallelujah. 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 What you got for us back there, sis? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Anybody glad to be in the number? Come on, somebody. Anybody glad that God woke you up this morning? Hallelujah. Everybody's glad, amen, that you are able to celebrate this holy week, amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. Hallelujah. And I came to give God my best praise. Hallelujah. I came to worship him like never before. I came to give him everything that I got on today. Hallelujah. Lord, because you deserve it all. You deserve it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, sis. Hallelujah, hallelujah. With Elder sharing about what he was talking about, and I, the scripture came to mind that, because he was saying that the weapon will form, but it won't prosper, right? But we also got to know that the enemy is on his assignment. And the word says in John 10 and 10 that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it 
Yeah, I know that word. Come on, somebody. Amen. I know that word. Oh, that's right. Yeah, huh? Amen. It gives you the reminder to know that even though the enemy thinks yeah. he's in control, Amen. God has sent his only begotten son yeah. so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Ain't that what this season all about? That God made the ultimate sacrifice. That he's on a journey. That he's just not started. He's starting his journey. His walk on to Calvary. He's beginning the preparation to get started. To give us life. And life more abundantly. That's why there's joy in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. There's love in the name of Jesus. There's life. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why don't we just stand to our feet and give God an audible praise this morning about how we just give us more than we could ever ask or imagine. Hallelujah. Let's look for a praise and a worship to him that is due to our God. Hallelujah. Let him soften his name. Let him put him in his rightful place because we know that the journey that is set before him and what he has to do. And he's going to do it willingly because he gives us life, life, and more abundantly. Hallelujah. God, we lift you up, oh God. We thank you, God. We glorify your name and we worship you, God. We love you, oh Heavenly Father. And we give you the glory. We exalt you and we put you in your rightful place. There's nobody like you, God. No one that can do what you do. But you are a good, good father. And we thank you, oh God. And we honor you. And we worship you. And we give you praise. And we lift our voice. And we usher into your presence today, oh God. Nothing can kill, steal, or destroy us from the worship that we have for you, oh Father. Nothing's going to separate us from your love, oh God. And you made that clear with your sacrifice on Calvary. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your life, oh God. Thank you for your journey, oh God. Oh God, we want to say hallelujah, God. Hosanna, 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 oh God. We usher in you, oh God. We usher in your presence today, oh God. We usher you in today because we know that you have a job to do. And so do we, oh God. So do we, oh God. That's why we give you glory. It's in your name, oh God. It's in your name. There's power in your name. There's love in the name. There's blood in the name. There's sacrifice in the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Yes, God. Oh, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come on. Hallelujah. Can you bless his name in here? Don't you know that something happens when you call on the name of Jesus? Let me say like this. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name is We love to Call your yeah. name is something we cannot explain. We cannot explain. That, that happens when we proclaim your great name. 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 Your great
Got moving back there. Father God, in the name of Jesus, yes. we come before you, O oh God, in a humble and a proper posture, O oh God, to receive your word that's from on high. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the sweet sacrifice of your son, Jesus the Christ. And Lord, as we go forth in your word, O oh God, we ask that your presence reside here. Lord, we ask that you move in a mighty way, O oh God. We ask that you move your man servant out of the way so that your word can go forth with clarity and with purpose. O oh Lord, we thank you right now in advance for what you're about to do, O oh God. And that's allow us to have a high time in the name of Jesus. Come on, say amen if you're with me. Amen. Amen if you're with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, I'm going to be brief. Amen. Amen. We come upon, amen, as the world in the Bible describes as the Holy Week. Amen. 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 This is the week um, that we like to um, commemorate uh, Palm Sunday. Amen. Yeah. This is this is during the time of Passover, um, with with the with the um, coming of everything that took place on the cross and Resurrection Sunday, which is next Sunday, Amen. And um, this is the start of the Holy Week, Amen. And, amen. Um, I tell you, I've preached this word. At least five times already, amen. But in the books, amen. Um, having to preach on Palm Sunday and on Easter Sunday, amen. But um, I just want to take a trip down memory lane. Can we do that, amen? Yes. I want us to take a look back so that we can move forward. Come on, somebody, amen. 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 So if you know, 
the story of Palm Sunday is recorded in all four of the Gospels. In the book of Matthews, Mark, John, and Luke. Amen? And I want to start off by taking a look at how it's worded in the book of uh, Mark. I mean Matthews. Amen? So come with me to Matthews chapter 21. I didn't give you this. Amen? No, I didn't. I didn't give you this. I'm... Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. Amen? Amen. The, the Bible says, Now as they approached Jerusalem and came upon and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. The word says, untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. Amen? Verse 4 said, now this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Verse 5 says, say to Daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a coat. The foyer of a donkey. The disciples went, did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and a coat and placed their coats on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Uh -huh. You hear me? Yeah. The crowd went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna mm -hmm. to the Son of David. Yeah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Yeah. The Bible says in verse 10 and 11, it says, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred. And ask, who is this? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And the crowd answers, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Amen? Amen. Here they are. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus is, is, is on his way from Galilee into Jerusalem on a donkey. Amen. I like to call him a jackass. Amen. I wanted to get that out. Amen. He's on the back of a jackass. Amen. Amen. And, and, and the Bible says that he's traveling from Galilee to Jerusalem. Amen. And now here we understand that we got two group of people. We got the people that's ushering him in who know who he is. And then we got the people that's in Jerusalem saying, who is he? You hear me? Now, I want you to take notice in the text here that it don't say nothing about a palm. <laughs> All right, now, okay, now, Sister Lisa, amen. It, it, it don't say nothing about a palm here. It just said a tree with branches. That's all it said, right? Come on with me. Let's go over to the mark. Uh, to, to, let's go over to map, uh, Mark now, amen? Let's go over to Mark. Amen. Chapter 11. Amen. The Bible says, Now as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, amen, same story, amen, just from a different point of view, amen. We know that the book of Matthews is depicting Jesus as king, amen. The book of Mark depicts him as his servant, amen. So let's see how, uh, how it was worded here. It said, Now go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there. Which no one has ever written, untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, 
while you are doing it, say that the what? The Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. The Bible says that they went and found a coat outside in the street, tied it to a doorway. And as they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing? Untying that coat. And they answered as Jesus has told them and the people just let them go. Now when they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it and many people spread their cloaks on a road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields to who went ahead, those who followed shouted, Hosanna, which means save me now, amen? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the co is coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The Bible says, now Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple's court. He looked around at everything, but it was already late. And he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Amen. You don't say nothing about a palm. In there. Anybody see something about a palm? It just brings, right? All right? Here we go. Come on. We're going to keep going. Amen. We're going to keep it moving. Amen. Let's go to John. Amen. Because I want to rest on Luke. Now, John is the only one that depicts this story with a palm. Amen? So therefore, I don't think that we should pay too much attention to the palm instead of what was taking place instead, which was the coming of, oh, okay, let me, let me, let me yeah. I, I might be going a little too fast, amen? <laughs> amen. The palm man pulled. Maybe if I'm not mistaken, it should be in chapter. Yeah, chapter 12. I'm, I'm correct. They are right. right around 12 and 12 is where it's located. Amen. Amen. John 12, 12. Here's the Bible say, now the next day the great crowd that had come from the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Here we go. They took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, what? Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Amen. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it was written, and do not be afraid, go to Zion. See, your king is coming. Seated on a donkey's coat. Amen? Okay. So here we see the first sighting of a palm. Amen? And we can't find it in none of the other gospels. No. Only John is the one who described palm branches as part of the um as part of this story amen and we know that palm sunday amen is is is, is you know it's a wonderful thing it's the start of the holy week amen and we know from studying that the that palm symbolizes something amen it symbolizes two things amen peace and victory all right Come on, I'm going to teach you a little something today, amen. I told you I done did it five times already, amen. So, 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 so amen. So, 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 the, the palm, amen, it symbolizes peace and victory, amen. It, it, you know, those who feel an uncomfortable, amen, it symbolize peace. And those who are in turmoil, amen, who, who in a fight for their life, amen, it symbolizes victory, amen. amen. Now, I love the way... Luke put it down, amen? So that's where we're going to park it at, amen? Because Luke, you know what I mean? He got that swag with him, amen? And um, you know, he tell it like it is, amen? So come on with me to uh, Luke 19, amen? We're going to pick it up in verse number 28. 
All right? All right, now, here we go. We in Luke chapter 19, verse 28. Amen. There we go. We got it up on the big screen so y'all can see it clearly. Amen. Now, the Bible says, now, after Jesus had said this, that he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. Amen. We, we, we understand that he's in travel. Amen. He, 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 he's leaving Galilee. He's en route to Jerusalem. Amen. And as he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, Olives amen, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever read. He says, untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you why you are untied, I need you to say this, the Lord needs it. You hear me? Come on with me. Now, the Bible said, now those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. And as they was untying the coat, its owner asked them, well, why are you untying this coat? And they replied, for the Lord needs it. Now, verse 35 said, now they brought it to Jesus, and then they threw their coats on the coat and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. Amen? The Bible goes on and say, now when he came to the place where the road goes down the Mount of Oz, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices yeah. Listen to this. For all the miracles they had seen. Uh -huh. Amen. And they shouted, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in the heaven and glory to the highest. You hear me? Yeah. Let me, let, me give, let me give you two more verses here. Now some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teach rebuke your disciples. Verse 4, he said, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Exactly. Let me pause it right there. <laughs> now, mind you, amen, we got two groups of people here, right? We got the people that's what Jesus, that's ushering him in to the town of Jerusalem. And you also got the people that's in Jerusalem wondering, who is this? They're trying to figure it out, amen? But see, I like the way that Luke put it, amen? Because see, he had a tendency to focus on who was in the crowd. People here with me here, Amen. The word of God says that as they was, uh, when he came in a place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, he said the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in the heaven, and glory in the highest. The Bible says, Amen. That the Pharisees uh, in the crowd said to Jesus, I need you to shut them guys up because they're making a whole bunch of rockets. Amen. I need you to rebuke your disciples. I need you to rebuke everybody that's come following you up in here. Amen. But Jesus said, I'll tell you, if, 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 if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Exactly. <laughs> you hear me? Now, when I read that, I said, yeah, 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 that sounds about right. Amen. Because, see, when you think about it, amen, uh, 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 when, when, when you uh, think about uh, praising God, amen, when you got a joyful praise yeah. for the miracles that you have already seen, yeah. <laughs> oh, you ain't with me. Can't nobody shut you up. Exactly. You hear me? Can't, you, I, I, I don't care what 
is going on. Amen. When you think about the goodness of God, when you think about how he brought you to and when he's taking you away with me here, I said, can't nobody shut you up. You hear me? That's why I don't understand how. As a matter of fact, maybe I do understand how somebody could come up in the house of God and don't give them a prayer. You know, come up in here just looking to see what's going on. Wondering why that 60 year old lady got some fast feet. You ain't with me. <laughs> I mean, come on, somebody. Amen. Are you wondering, amen, why, why people running up to the altar? Uh -huh. exactly. And I got my answer right here. It's because they ain't seen nothing. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, sure. You ain't with me. I said they gave a joyful praise for, for the miracles that they had seen. Meaning that they was in close proximity of. Meaning that they got a connection to. Meaning that they got a relationship with. See, if you ain't got that, now I can understand why you can come up in a church house, amen, and just look around like you lost. They ain't seen nothing. They ain't seen nothing, amen. They don't have a relationship with God, amen. They, they, they don't know him personally, amen. amen. When I think about it, the two groups of people, you got the people that's with Jesus, who know who he is, and then you got the people that's in the town of Jerusalem wondering who he is. The Bible says that the people that know who he is was, was, was given a joyful praise for the things that they had seen. Meaning that the things that they had uh, 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 already received from God. Hmm? Now, when I'm thinking about it, amen, I know that that crowd of people was very long. Because I think about, amen, I, I, I'm quite sure, amen, that the, that the woman with the issue of blood was in the crowd. Yeah. You ain't yeah. with me here. Yeah. Amen. I'm quite sure they could shut her up. Yeah. I'm quite sure she was telling me that I went to the doctor. I went to the specialist. Yeah. But could nobody save me? Yeah. Or once I touched him, I was done. You ain't with me here. I was clear. I'm quite sure that Lazarus was in the crack. Yeah. You hear me? Uh, huh? He got, think about it. Couldn't shut him up. Talk about I was in a I was in a in, in, in a tomb for four days oh, with the rock rolled over the fairway with me here. What my death clothes on? Uh, and Jesus showed up yeah. and said, Come on out of here, Lazarus. Uh, Take some death clothes. I can I can imagine. Uh, And they had a joyful praise for what they had 
have been already seen. Couldn't tell them nothing. It baffles me how you can come into the house of God and don't give them a prayer. That let me know you ain't seen nothing. <laughs> come on, somebody. You don't know them like I know. Them. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Jesus said if they keep quiet, the rock gonna cry out. You ain't with me. Here. I tell you that when you experience a relationship with Christ, when He shows up in your life, Amen. Something just, it just can't be contained. Exactly. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I, I always used to wonder when I was young, when I, I used to go to church and I used to see my grandmama crying. Amen. I used to see my aunties falling out on the floor. Amen. And I'm wondering what is going on here. It scared me a little bit because I didn't, I didn't have a relationship with them. Amen. And I said, oh, they crazy. But once I seen him for myself, once he showed up in my life, come on, somebody. I told you he ain't with me here. I said, once he touched me, my son, my wife played this song over and over. Just one touch. Just one touch. That's all it takes. Amen. Just one. Jesus. I'm getting stirred up just thinking about it. Amen. Uh -huh. He was talking about the people in the crowd. Now we got two groups of people here. We got the people that's ushering him in with a praise for the things that they had already seen. And now you got the people, amen, who in Jerusalem wondering who is this? Now, I want you to know that the people in Jerusalem know the word. They understood the prophecy that was prophesied in Zechariah 9 and 9, where the Bible says that Jesus was going to show up on the donkey. Amen. But still, come on, somebody, they missed it. Amen. Come on, let me read on so we can get on out of here. <laughs> now the Bible says in verses 41 right here, amen. And here's my message right here. That, my message coming up. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, the Bible says that he wept over it. You hear that? Yeah. Meaning that he shed a tear. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he said that if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, my, my, my. Let me pause right there. Mind you, the people, as Jesus riding in on the, on the jackass, you hear me? They are crying out, Hosanna, which means save me now. You hear me? Somebody yeah, <laughs> with me here. They crying out. Hosanna. Save me now. You hear me? And by the time Jesus reached Jerusalem, he had to weep. Because see, once the crowd that was with him started mingling with the crowd that was in Jerusalem, next thing you know, they don't know. Come on, you know the story, amen? Listen, he rolled in on my, on Sunday, and by Thursday, he talked about, let's kill him. Yeah. Same folk. Same. Once they started mingling with the people in Jerusalem, amen, they done lost all sight. Huh? What they seen, they had their lost. The Bible says that he wept, and he said, if you, 
if you had only known on this day what would bring you peace. But now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. The Bible says they will dash you to the ground and the children within your walls. The last verse says they will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. It's just, it's amazing how it just switched up just like that. You hear me? I'm talking about just like that. Amen. And here's my message, and just let me know right here. Because, see, we're taking a look back so that we can move forward. Amen. Yeah. And, 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 and God showed me that uh, how this relates to today. Amen. And the message is that everybody want to be seen, but don't nobody want to be delivered. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, somebody. When you think about it, amen. <laughs> Can I wrap it up for you, amen? Everybody want to be saved, but don't nobody want to be delivered. I mean, you want to call Hosanna, Lord, save me now, amen, but you don't want to be obedient to the, you ain't with me here, amen. So you don't want to be set free, but you want to be saved. Oh, that felt good to me. Let me say it one more time. Listen, everybody want to be saved, but they don't want to be delivered. Amen. See, you want to call on Jesus in late in the midnight hour. Amen. You want to call on Jesus when it gets thick, when it gets tough, when it gets rough, but you don't want to be delivered. Because delivery takes work. Huh? Think about it. When you deliver something, that means it got to go somewhere. Huh? It travels. And that's how this word relates to us today. Because we find ourselves in the same situation as a church over 2,000 years from when this took place. That we want to be saved but we don't want to be delivered. Exactly. Amen? Amen. Deliver comes with acknowledging. Mm -hmm. It comes with repentance. Mm -hmm. Amen. It comes with belief. Mm -hmm. It comes with obedience. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yes. It comes with a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what deliverance entails. Amen. And oftentimes, you know, we find ourselves in the same situation as the people of Israel did over 2,000 years ago. Amen. We expect God to save us and deliver us a certain way. And when it don't happen the way that we see it, we have a tendency, amen, to put God on the backbone. Amen. Don't be obedient to his word. Because, see, the people of Israel was expecting God to come and rule over the land. Amen? They wanted him to establish a political kingdom in. But his job was to establish a eternal framework in here. And when they missed it, come on, somebody, they turned on. Amen? And oftentimes, that's why people walk away from the church. That's why people come and go. Amen. Because they praying to God for something. Amen. And when God don't answer it the way that they see it, you begin to lose faith. You hear me? That's why I always encourage people that when you're asking God for something, amen, don't put a... a, 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 a a time limit on it, amen. Don't put an expectation on it. Come on, somebody. When you go to God, you, you, you need to go to him saying, God, if it's your will. Yeah. If it's your will. Yeah. Because think about it, amen. And in in, in, in back in the day, in, in, in the biblical sense, amen, 
a, a king will ride in on a chariot on a horse. Jesus said, no, I'm going to switch it up. I'm coming on a, uh, on a jackass. Come on, somebody. Just to let you know, come on, somebody, that I ain't, I, I, I ain't regular. Come on, somebody. I, I, I'm something different. Hey, Amen. You can't box me in. And we need to understand that, amen, that we can't put limitations, we can't put conditions, we can't put a, a, a timetable on the things that we come to God with. Because we're going to be highly disappointed. I tried it. And was disappointed. Until I realized that it's his will that's going to be done at the end of the day. You hear me? I learned. Back in 2020, amen, when my grandmother passed away from COVID. You hear me? I was praying up. Uh, you, oh, you don't, you ain't with me here. I was praying up a storm. God, you need to heal her right now in the name of Jesus. She need to get up out of that hospital room and come on home and be with me. I miss her. I love her. God, I need you to do a miracle. And two days later, he called her home. And I was lost. Asking God, why, God? He said, I answered your prayers. <laughs> you ain't looking here. Uh, yeah. I answered your prayers. You tell you told me you, you, you came to me and you said you want her to be healed. You said you ain't want her to suffer no more. Yeah. Ain't that what you asked? But I got mad because he didn't do it the way I wanted him to do it. That's right. That's right. That's right. You ain't with me. Come on. That's, come on. That part, amen. So I need us to understand, amen, that being saved comes with being delivered. Amen. That that. Uh, when, when, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, amen, that means uh, a repentance is supposed to take place, that we're supposed to turn away from the things of yesterday and walk into the newness which God has called you into. Amen? Amen. amen. I'm going to give you part two next Sunday. Amen. I'm going to leave it right there. And we're going to get to the cross on next awesome. Sunday and what took place in between. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, we're going to have communion up in this place today. Amen. Give us some music. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. understand on how the things that we face today is nothing new. That the people in the Bible and our forefathers have been dealt the same hand. 
Amen. God didn't come to change the world. Amen. He didn't come to fix our lives. He said he came so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. That's why I remember that word. Amen. Yeah. That's what he came for. Amen. Amen. Yeah. sacrifice that Jesus Christ paid for you. Every blood-washed believer, every non-believer, every man, he said, everyone under the earth, under and on the earth, amen. So as we do this, the Bible says that the one who had dipped his hand into the bowl, um, no, the Bible says in uh, Matthew 24, the son of man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrayed the son of man. It would be better for him if he was not born. Then Judas, the one who betrayed him, surely do not mean this rabbi. Jesus answered, you, you have said so. Verse 26, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, take and eat. For this is my body. Let us eat. today with clarity, amen. Um, you know, I just wanted to point out the fact that we don't want to put too much emphasis on the palm itself, amen. We want to pay close attention to what took place in this whole process on how one minute they was giving Jesus the highest praise because they thought that he was coming to save them the way that they wanted to be saved. And then they realized that he didn't come 
to do it how they want it. They flip the switch on them. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, I thank you for allowing us to come together on this glorious afternoon. Lord, I pray that as we leave this place, that your grace, your love, your mercy, and your favor follow us, oh God. That your spirit continues to be stirred up, oh God, as we have a joyful praise and remembrance of what we already see. Lord, we've seen you do a mighty work in each and every last one of us, oh God. We've seen you do a mighty work in this house alone. Every time I read the story of, the, of, of Jesus turning water into wine and feeding uh, 5,000 with two loaves and five, uh, five loaves of bread, I'm re reminded of that's the same thing that you're doing in this house. I'm wondering, oh God, how we can achieve 10 years Oh, God, and that's simply by us putting our little coins together and you multiplying it tenfold, you increasing it, oh, God. So we just want to thank you for it all the more, give you glory, praise, and honor, and just continue to follow your lead. Lord, we thank you for everyone that showed up. We thank you for everyone that's watched online on today. And, Father God, I, my prayer is real simple, oh, God, that we can continue to take a look back so that we can move forward, that we can learn from the mistakes of others, oh God, and not disconnect from you in any way, shape, or fashion. Lord, we say that we love you, we honor you, and it's in Jesus' name that we seal this word and we seal this service. Amen and thank God. Amen. Amen.